insulin is the marker we should focus on. Not only does it help us detect problems sooner, but it also helps us treat the problems better. Because if a treatment is aiming to improve a chronic disease, certainly those that have a metabolic foundation, as most chronic diseases do, if it fails to address the insulin, you're only treating a symptom and you're failing to actually solve the problem. You've written this book because you wanted to shine light on the origins of metabolic disease. My concern was that we were simply looking at it incorrectly, uh, whereas the classic paradigm on metabolic health has had us focusing almost exclusively on the molecule glucose or blood sugar. My contention is that there is another one that we've been missing that many consider to be uh, the sidekick, that they think blood sugar is the hero or, or the villain of the story. That's the one we have to focus on. And any mention of insulin, this hormone in the blood, is almost an afterthought where very commonly, even in, in, in with conventionally trained clinicians, insulin is discussed purely in terms of what it can do to lowering blood sugar levels. And my entire argument, and certainly the justification for the book, is that there that insulin is in fact the main character in the story that we're trying to tell about metabolic health and the dangers of poor metabolic health, which is a, a global phenomenon. Um, insulin is the metric that matters. So Whereas our classical view has had a glucose-centric paradigm, it's glucose through which we see metabolic health. That's what we measure all the time, whether it's fasting glucose, whether it's A1C, whether it's wearing a continuous glucose monitor. My thought is, yes, those are valuable, particularly a glucose monitor, but they have much less value if, they're, if we don't look at it firstly um, through the lens of insulin. So we need an insulin-centric paradigm um, and then once our view shifts to looking at insulin as the marker, it becomes, you know, there's this expression, the canary in the coal mine, which is this kind of early indicator of a problem. Insulin is a much earlier indicator of this descent into metabolic mayhem than glucose is. Uh, for example, an individual who's moving towards type 2 diabetes, which is like the penultimate evidence of metabolic disruption, while everyone's looking at the glucose, it's possible that a person is going through their 20s and their 30s and their early 40s and their glucose is staying totally normal. And so the clinician says, oh, you're fine. There's no hint of a problem. At the same time, they're now on a blood pressure medication. Maybe they're on an erectile dysfunction medication in the case of a guy or another fertility medication in the case of a woman for a PCOS, and, but not thinking that there's any metabolic underpinning because glucose is staying normal. However, if that if that view had gotten larger or even shifted to encompass insulin, while the glucose has been staying normal, the insulin has been waging this silent war, be, uh, you know, silent because no one's thinking it's relevant here, but insulin levels are going higher and higher and higher every year in an effort to keep the glucose in check. And this, of course, uh, it would be evident. We would see this if we measured it. And now the whole conversation changes uh, where, it, especially if someone's very informed, they would say, well, your glucose is normal, but gosh, you need a lot of insulin to keep it there. You have insulin resistance, as many people do, and this is what's contributing to your infertility or your fatty liver disease or your hypertension. So let's improve your insulin resistance rather than give you a specific medication for this specific disorder. So to kind of wrap all this up, as I've elaborated maybe too much, um, insulin is the marker we should focus on. Not only does it help us detect problems sooner, but it also helps us treat the problems better. Because if a treatment is aiming to improve a chronic disease, certainly those that have a metabolic foundation, as most chronic diseases do, if it fails to address the insulin, you're only treating a symptom and you're failing to actually solve the problem. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, check out this video here, which tells you how to get rid of that stubborn belly fat.